ಬಂದೇಹಂ The following is a conversation with his divine grace AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada recorded on the 9th of May 1975 in Perth Australia This is Carol Cameron mm. from the University of West Australia, mm. and she is uh, she has a degree in social work in arts, and she's working on a master's degree in anthropology. And in this degree, her paper is on the subject of the influence of Hindu and Buddhist mysticism on the West. Mm. So she would like to ask you some questions. Well, I would like to know in the beginning why you felt the need to come to the West. I know a little bit about um, the background, but not very much. Mm-hmm. Why you were so fortunate to come? That I was speaking, of course, it is very strong one, that the Western people, they are claiming very civilized, but I have got object that what happened to the West. Because, for example, the animal killing, the Western people are mostly Christians. And now Lord Jesus Christ said that thou shalt not kill, but the the result was that two thousand years passed, but the people of the Western country, they are still killing. So when they have accepted Christianity, what is your answer? The, the actual original scriptures aren't enacted in, in Western life. I mean to say that mm. Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt not kill. What uh, kind of men were there that Lord Christ had to request them not to kill? That means they were killers. Suppose if somebody is thief and if I give him some good instruction, I say, you should not commit that. That means you are thief. You are already. Otherwise, why I say that thou shalt not commit theft? A naughty child is disturbing, I say, my dear child, don't do this. Similarly, when Christ said, thou shalt not kill, that means he said amongst people who are in the habit of killing. Is it not? Now, after taking instruction, from Christ. First of all, they killed Christ. That means they could not understand the instruction. Their first business was to kill the instructor. And after that, two thousand years passed, he still had killing. So when they have accepted the teachings of Lord Christ, any man said this? So you think the Christian faith has been reflected in the behavior of Western people? Yes, that is practical. You are maintaining huge slaughterhouses, regular killing. Mm-hmm. So you took instruction from Christ, thou shalt not kill. You first of all kill him. And then the killing process is going on upon the animals and declaring wars every now and then. So the killing business is going on regularly, in your regular life also. You are maintaining big, big slaughterhouse. Then when you accepted the instruction of Christ, that I want to know. What is that debt? Do you see any hope for the world? We seem to be moving towards destruction or hold. No, my 
in the Middle East. He's asking you, when did this civilization actually accept the teachings of Christ? When have they? Yeah. Not, not overall at all, only in small pockets. <coughs> Never overall. That's why you are claiming that you're Christian, just like you are having cross. That is the sign that you kill Christ. Mm. The cross is the killing symbol of Christ. This is the resurrection symbol. Uh, maybe. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not but only a Christian many, symbol. Many priestly order, they carry the cross. Mm. Cross is the sign where Lord Jesus Christ was killed. Is it not? It is, but that symbol is used in a lot but of ways. That means how you killed Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. That is the sign. That reminds you that you killed. You accuse the Jewish people, they killed. But you are also killed, although you are claiming Christian. So therefore, I, am, I want to know you are a, a learned scholar. When you abided by the order of Lord Jesus Christ, that is my question. When? When did you abide by the orders of Jesus Christ? Maybe I. Every one of you, Western mm-hmm. And if you have avoided by the order of Jesus Christ, then why you are systematically killing? The order is thou shalt not kill. Now two thousand years passed, mm-hmm. but you could not accept the instruction of Lord Jesus Christ. And you are all claiming that you are Christian. When did you accept Christianity? That is my question. Because you are disobeying the order of Christ. Then when did you accept? Two thousand years past? Hmm? We will answer this. Never. Hmm? I never accepted. Hmm. What is the main part of your philosophy? Is it based on the Vedanta school? No. This is no question of philosophy. You could not accept the simple instruction. So where is the question of philosophy? The question of love. Yeah. You cannot understand the principles of life and morality that Jesus Christ instruction, that thou shalt not kill. So how we become philosopher? Srila Prabhupada said that I could not understand the simple instruction, so where is the question of understanding philosophy, not love? Mm-hmm. Philosophy. You have no love because you are accustomed to kill. Philosophy begins when you know that uh, everyone is part and parcel of God and everyone should be given the full facilities to live without injuring anyone for one's personal benefit. Pandita samadarshan, a pandit, philosopher means learned scholar, not fools and rascals can become pillars of Those who are learned scholars, thoughtful, they can become pillars of But if one has no knowledge how to behave with other living entities, what is the meaning of becoming a pillar? How would you go about teaching this, this idea of love? How, how Love means that I want to eat something and if I love somebody then I will see that my beloved also eat. If you take something from your beloved, then naturally the lovers present things. Just a boy loves a girl. 
he presents something to the Lord. So if he accept presentation by others, we should give him also something. And if I have some confidential things, I must disclose it to the lover. And the lover is also expected. He should not keep anything confidential. He should disclose. These are the six reciprocal exchange between the lover and the beloved. If I love you because you are beautiful for my sense gratification, but I keep everything secret, that is not love. That is sense gratification. Lust. These are the signs of love. Dadati, Pridhiminati, Bhunti, Bhujayati, Jaiva, Gujam, Akati, Prichati, Saravida, Priti Lakshan. Priti means love. These are the symptoms. Give and take, eat and give to eat, and open your mind and know the other part is mine also. This is love. The more you increase the six kinds of exchange, there is an increasing the love. Do you think a man who says he loves God should withdraw from the world, say, into a, a community or something like that? I must have had between two. Mm-hmm. Then you can expand it. First the love begins. Love means there are two, the lover and the beloved. So the transaction begins between the two. Then it expands. How do you go if you look at the two as, say, uh, the Creator and the person? Would that be the two that you have in mind? How would you go about fostering that relationship? What she says if you mean by the two, the Creator and us, uh, how would you go about fostering or uh, increasing that relationship between us and Creator? Creator. Do you believe in Creator? Impersonal Creator, yes. She says impersonal Creator. Impersonal? Yes. Oh, what is that philosophy? Impersonal Creator? Without any attributes that we can... The Creator is an attribute. <coughs> to become Creator that is an attribute. Yes. If I create this bell, I know the art how to create a bell. So, this is my attribute. How can you say the Creator is without attribute? This is false philosophy. I know how to create this bell. So that is my artistic sense. That is my qualification. And how do you say I am without qualification? As soon as you say Creator, then He has got many qualifications. How can ignorance be removed? How can the ignorant people do not so learn from the learned. If you have got this idea that creator is impersonal, that means you are not a learner. You have no knowledge. And this is the simple answer. As soon as you say creator, he has so many qualities. Suppose I am ringing now when the spring is loose, it does not sound. So others may not know, but one who has created is so the spring is loose, you now we wind it again. That means I know ins and out and everything. That is creator. So if one is cognizant of everything, how he can be in person? What is this philosophy? Hmm? Answer. You are philosopher. Hmm. Well, he would incorporate personal hmm? attributes. He says he. Hmm. He says he. Yes, yes. But he is in person. The intellect and the emotion. Yeah. How great ideas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and they are passing on philosophy. Yes. She said he. He contradicts. Mm. He say he, and again he is in person. 
At the emotional level, it's a very personal. So why should you emotionalize? You have feelings of You should talk very nicely. <laughs> I don't think that's <laughs> If God is in everything, then the personal attributes must be part of Him, it, whatever. But God is not just limited. You have no idea of God. I don't think. He must be personal. As soon as you say he knows everything, he creates and so many other things, then you, these are all personal. This you is say our, he, he, mm-hmm. these are all personal. This is only our idea of God and not necessarily. That means God you have no clear idea of God. Mm-hmm. You have vague idea. Mm-hmm. So you have to learn what is God. You think you can know? Huh? The nature of God. She says, Do you think you can know the nature of God? Yes. Yeah. In you an know intellectual also. way. You can know also. You might know something in your heart but not be able to express it. Can it no, why not express it? You can express it. Mm-hmm. If whatever is, is, is within your heart, if you cannot express, then you are not perfect. You must express what is within your heart very clearly. Not that I have got something within my heart and I cannot express. Then my, my knowledge is imperfect. So often our understanding moves sort of separately, the emotional, the heart. Mm-hmm. Emotion is not required mm-hmm. for scientific knowledge. Emotion is not useless. It must be actual. Emotion is not useless. Emotion is uh, useful in high ecstatic love, not for scientific study of something. You require emotion, no. But in the, the bhakti way of doing yeah. things, this uh, notion of love is very closely intertwined. Yes. Yes. That is the highest stage, mm-hmm. not in the beginning. Mm-hmm. In the beginning, Devotion means I should be devoted to you. Why should I be devoted to you unless you are worthy? Eh? One is just like Krishna says, you surrender unto me. So unless I understand that Krishna is worth for my surrendering, he is worthy, why shall I surrender to Krishna? If I demand immediately you come uh, that you surrender, I would you like to do that? To surrender. Mm-hmm. If I ask you that you surrender, I am meeting you for the first time. Would you like to surrender? Yeah. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> to want to and to do it. You are going to be a doctor in anthropology, is it not? Mm. And where is the sense of God there? I only do it for a living, the other side of the No, no, I would something. say mm. the anthropology, it is a big scientific mm. department. Mm. Where, where, is, where, is, where is the understanding of God there? I don't find it difficult. I find it difficult to reconcile. Um, the love of God is actually doing something like this. Then uh, the how we are going to speculate on anthropology? Mm. If you cannot adjust, how you are wasting your time in this science, anthropology, it is a false science. I'm waiting to be led into something which is good. <coughs> it, it has no meaning. Mm. When you Yes, you can only decide in, in the... It's all theory, Darwin theory, it's a false theory. It has no the idea of sound <laughs> background. It is, he, he says it is theory. Theory is not science. I can propose some theory, it is like that. But that is not science. Science means observation and experiment. That is science. 
you observe how the rules are working and when you practically bring them into experiment, then it is science. If you simply theorize, that is not science. Mental speculation. Present something which will benefit the people and practical. That is science. Do you think it's possible to within, say, an education framework, or should it be something quite separate? Well, education, education, if it is not for the benefit of the people, then what is the use of such education? Education means something which will benefit the mass of people. That is it. First of all, anyone, even Darwin, he is not independent. And just like Darwin has died, and so he is under the control of something higher. Nobody wants to die, but he is forced to die. Is it not? Then where is his independence? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She says that is the illusion of independence. Yes, so if you simply, in an illusion you leave, then why is your education? If you remain in darkness, then why is your education? Illusion means darkness. So if you are in darkness, then why is your education? And why is your philosophy? Because it means right knowledge. Right knowledge, just like everyone wants to live, nobody wants to die. So the inquiry should be that I do not wish to die. Why death is forced upon me? Which is what is that force? What is the nature of that force? If I submit, yes, the force is there. Then where is my knowledge? I do not wish to die. So why death is forced upon me? Nobody wants miserable condition of life, but miserable condition of life is enforced upon me. So this should be, first of all, inquire that I do not want this thing. And who is enforcing upon me these things? This is the first inquiry. I tend to approach from the other side and ask, who am I? What is this thing that I call? It is everyone's problem. Mm. I don't want something, but something is enforced upon me. Just like you are now a young girl. You do not like to be old over, but you have to become old over. The nature will force you. There, after a certain age, after forty years of age, you must become old and you must not remain so beautiful. But no one wants that. No woman wants that I shall look not beautiful, I, my place should be flabby and no luster. I don't want all this. Why it is forced? The suffering and pain leads people to God, isn't it? This is a teaching she, in says, she says, doesn't the suffering and pain lead people towards God? Yes, yeah, that is the law. But we are so dull-headed that we do not inquire. That, that is my uh, statement, that we should inquire. Who is forcing these things? And then there is inquiry of God. Is it possible to carry out that inquiry all the time yeah. that you're engaged in yeah. activity? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is the real inquiry. Mm-hmm. Where from my life has begun? What is the ultimate goal of my life? Why I am put into these conditions which I do not like? Who is enforcing these things? That is the proper inquiry of the human being. 
And we cannot solve the question of birth, death, old age and disease and you are theorizing something utopia. What is the use of this? Advancement or not? I live for fifty years and sixty years and the Darwin theory and they are calculating gap of millions of years. Huh? There is a gap for millions of years. And you will live for fifty years. How you are taking calculation of millions of years? Mm-hmm. Speculation. So. Mm-hmm. And misleading people. An honest man should not mislead others. He should understand that his knowledge is limited. How can I say something theory, theorizing? That is not very good business. The misleading people. I have no perfect knowledge. I am theorizing. I have no actually accurate knowledge. Mm-hmm. And I am theorizing. I am misleading people. Big blah. That is it. An honest man should not take part in big bluffs. First of all, you must have accurate knowledge. Then you will give knowledge to others. That is our proposition. First of all, make your life perfect, then you try to give knowledge. If you have no knowledge, vague knowledge, not definite knowledge, then why should you try to give knowledge to others? Can you have perfect knowledge? Huh? Can you have perfect knowledge? Um, yes. Perfect knowledge you can immediately provide it. You take knowledge from the perfect. If you receive knowledge from a bogus person, then how we can have perfect knowledge? Knowledge has to be received from a person. Especially you go to school, college, teachers, guru, to receive knowledge. So if your teacher, guru, parents, those are superior, if they are perfect, then you get perfect knowledge. But if your teacher is a bogus, then you get bogus knowledge. And this is immediate, huh? This is immediate. She says, is this immediate, the reception of perfect knowledge? Yes. Just like we are giving knowledge from Bhagavad Gita. This is perfect knowledge. You take it, you become perfect. And your actions are perfect actions. And your actions are perfect actions. Oh, yes. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, it is said, Manvana Bhagavad Bhakta. To think of God. So we are doing this. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. We are thinking of Krishna. The direction is there, mm-hmm. and we are doing that. Therefore, my action is perfect. The, the, the physician says that you take this medicine in such and such dose, you don't do this and do this. If I follow, then I'm cured. Perfect. Does a man then stop judging his actions? No. If, the, if I know that the knowledge which I'm receiving from the person is perfect, then there is no question of judging. You simply follow. Just like a child. Child assumes that my father is perfect. So actually a father should be perfect at least for the child. Father says, my dear child, this is called table. The child does not know what is table, but he understands from his father. He says, this is table. So when the child says it is table, it is fact. This is perfect. He may be imperfect, his child, but because he is repeating the perfect knowledge of his father, so whatever he is speaking is perfect. Because he has received the knowledge from the perfect father. That in this way we can gather knowledge. Similarly, if you get instruction from the perfect, then your knowledge is perfect. And if you receive knowledge just like anthropology from an imperfect person, Darwin, then the whole thing is imperfect. So why should we waste our time in imperfect knowledge? 
Because there are so few people around us, I think you're perfect. That is another thing. That, uh, people want to be cheated, so I, I shall be perfect cheater. <laughs> that is another thing. And take my doctor's title, being a perfect cheater. If you look for those who are perfect, you don't find them. She says, if you, she says there are so few perfect people, if you look for a perfect person, you don't find any. Therefore, we are giving. Here is Krishna. Here is the perfect person. You take him. But you don't follow him. You don't follow him. Because there's so few people around us, I think you're perfect. You don't follow him. 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 You don't You don't follow him. You don't like to follow him. You will follow Dari. <laughs> So whose fault it is? The perfect person's fault or your fault. Don't like to hear from the perfect person. You want to hear from humble, bogus person. Defect. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Give them to her. Hmm. He's bringing something for you. Is your record home new from the Radha Krishna temple? You have that. Beautiful. We've seen the chants every night now. She says they have the Radha Krishna temple album and every night they sing the chants. Right. At home. They have the record from London. The oh. Very hard to get hold of, actually. Yeah, that will benefit. Lovely. That will benefit. Mm. Mm. That uh, record which has done by George Yes. Yes. It's very rare to find music like that here. Harry Sun has contributed mm. Mm. many. Yeah. He gave me first of all nineteen thousand dollars for printing Krishna book. Yes, now he has purchased one house in London. We are using them. It is two hundred thousand pounds. Yes, he is a good boy, good soul. He is also chanting Hare Krishna. Yes. He chants all Hare Krishna. He has made some record. Krishna. Right. My dear Lord, I really want to see you. Something like that. Like that. Yes. Krishna, yes. 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 Uh, his latest album, Krishna, where are you? Oh, I haven't seen it. When in the record album he has given this picture. So you see, you are intelligent, Lord, you study about this Krishna concept. That will benefit you. The anthropology, you may get some degree of relation, but it will be benefit. Mm-hmm. Take it with you the whole. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The empire, when I come to the West, we buy an inquiry that two thousand years ago we have taught that thou shalt not kill. And your business is only to kill. I have come to inquire from very How we have become civilized. That you cannot accept one's instruction of Jesus Christ. And you are declaring as as Christian and civilized. This is my question, answer. In two thousand years, first of all you began killing Krishna Christ. Never mind. It's still two thousand years past. He could not stop killing. He could not accept the first minister. What kind of civilized man? Sometimes they say, Prabhupada, that 
Jesus meant just uh, meant. just human beings. All right. That means your killers are human beings. That means in the beginning you are all killers are human beings. And therefore you kill Jesus Christ. That is not very good quality. Killer are human beings. He says, Thou shalt not kill. Where he says that thou shalt not kill human beings. That is your interpretation. Well, that's obvious he meant only human beings because he himself was killing animals. <laughs> Christ was killing them. Well, he instructed his own disciples to distribute the fish. So he was also involved in killing distributing animals. fish, but he has said that uh, the fruits and vegetables should be your flesh, what is that? Well, that was yeah. before Christ. Huh? He never said he that. Also said that. Where is he saying? The same the last one. Hmm? Yeah, the Bible says that, and Christ also spoke that, that the uh, um, grasses of the fields, the fruits of the trees shall be the meat. Then there is contradiction. Hmm. <laughs> so then why? Yeah, the Christians, they always say that, well, Christ was eating fish and drinking wine, so what harm are we doing? When Han did his head, that thou shalt not kill. That was also, well, that was actually the Ten Commandments. That was given by given to God. Moses. By Moses. Yeah. Hmm? That was given to Moses by God, the Ten Commandments. That is not Christ and so. Well, well, Christ enforced it. Yeah. It was accepted by him as one of the rules. Christ's greatest commandment was to <coughs> love God above all things. So if one is to love God, he must follow his instruction. Okay. Who is following the instruction? We are. But um, supposing Christ distributed his but did he say that you shall uh, maintain a regular slaughterhouse for killing animals? Uh, he, he was against that. that. He threw um, he threw the men out of the temple because they were selling lambs in the temple to be offered to the at the altar. So he kicked them out, saying, "This temple is not a place for selling." animals for slaughter. But in one place they say that uh, Christ encouraged fishermen because he came and the fishermen were fishing on one side of the boat and Christ came along and said, oh, you're fishing on the wrong side of the boat. He said, put your nets on the other side and you'll get more fish. And they did that and they got huge amounts of fish and so they were encouraged in their uh, fish eating this way. Jesus also said to the fishermen, he said, Give up your fishing, and I'll make you fishers of men. He said this to his disciples. <laughs> then on the whole it comes that there's an instruction that sometimes contradictory. Not only that, but they say that, that um, usually when uh, when it comes right down to it, the Bible has gone through so many interpretations mm-hmm. and so many changes in the last 2,000 years that it is very deep. people, I've talked to professors who know the, the original Hebrew and the original tongues that the Bible were written, uh, was written in, and they say that it's changed so much that you can hardly... Uh, can hardly yeah, that's changing. That's like it is said, that's how not kill. Then now changing, that's how not comic model. Mm. They're doing that. Yeah. yeah, they have a modern Bible. Mm. So when you change, then the authority is lost. Just like in our society, sometimes they do something nonsense and they prove what they do. Things deteriorate like that. Mm. 
Therefore, Krishna said, Sakalina Mahata Yoganashtata. Mm-hmm. In the course of time, this yoga was lost. Therefore, I am repeating the same thing all clearly to you. So it requires like that. The one thing about the Christian religion is that through the last 2,000 years, Christ's original teachings may have been um, good teaching, may have been potent preaching, but because there was no potent preachers to carry on the preaching, therefore the whole thing has been lost. But if there are potent preachers to continue re-establishing and establishing new principles, again... I have in mind if everything is now changed, where you get the right influence. That's the problem. That's why there's so many uh, hundreds of branches of Christianity, literally hundreds. So many divisions of Christianity. Some people accept this, some that part. We should add, okay, that Bhagavad Gita is not like that. Mm-hmm. It is coming in the same form as it was taught to Arjuna. If we challenge that, I have no that it has not been changed, the acharyas are there. The acharyas are there, and they are accepting. Therefore it is correct. We have to follow the acharya. So when we see the acharyas are accepted, then we accept. All the acharyas Ramanu Charya, Madhya Charya. Before that, other Acharya also. Yes. They never say that this was not in the original speech. It has been changed. You don't find any such statement from the Acharya. The best thing, therefore, if you want a religious system, Bhagavad Gita is coming without any contradiction, change, for the last five thousand years. He accepts. Other scriptures are newly introduced and there are so many doubts, so many interpolations. So if you want real religious system, this is the scripture spoken directly by God and accepted by all the Acharyas to take it. If you are really after God, so you take enlightenment from this perfect scripture. If you want truth, it doesn't matter where from it is coming, I must accept the truth. The, uh, the Christians openly admit that the Bible has been changed, but they also have a lot of doubt about no, our scripture. In the doubt, the Christian religion is now dead. That we see practically. So many churches are not working. Nobody comes there. As they have seen that their scripture has been changed, they also have a very strong doubt about our scripture. They say, well, yours is even older than ours. So There's somewhere, somewhere right. along the line they say it must have But those who are followers of the authorities, they know. You are outside. You, it may be, it may not be, but you have no authority. You are simply taking a, a hypothesis is made. But those who are actually fallen, they do not say. So. You know, whose who's person is more important? You are not there. You are outside there. You are simply mm, suggesting because you had bad experience. But one who has no such experience, why he should follow you again? Actually, if anyone looks at um, Bhagavad Gita as it is, presented by yourself, then they can logically see that it is perfect. Yeah. We have got all argument, logic, everything. Why should we be blind? Well, the results can be seen practically following the Bhagavad Gita, written by you, Śrīla Prabhupāda, and giving up these nonsense activities. Right. Letters are posted. 
Ah, uh, no, not yet. Srila Prabhupada, if the knowledge was handed down by the saintly kings, even Bharabharapatam, uh, how is it that the knowledge was lost? Hmm? How is it that the knowledge was lost? Well, if, when the, it was not handed down, simply understood by speculation, or if it is not handed down as it is, they might have made some changes, or they did not hand down. Suppose I handed it down to you, but if you do not do that, then it's lost. Now the Krishna consciousness movement is going on in my presence. Now, after my departure, if you do not do this, then it is lost. If you go on, as you are doing now, then it will go on. 